Today we're gonna try a pattern that I haven't tried out yet. This is gonna be my variation of the strong arm merkin. Uh, the difference between my strong arm and a regular strong arm merkin is the claw that we're gonna use today is going to be made out of rabbit instead of uh, a chenille claw. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna get our number four hook in here. This is a Umqua, what is this, a 506 uh, 60 degree jig hook. Uh, this is their heavier version of it since this will be used for saltwater, uh, redfish and permit and bonefish and things of that nature. So first thing we're gonna do is just go ahead and get our thread starter right here on the front. Don't need to go too far back. We're gonna try to get these eyes as far forward as possible. Now, because this is a jig hook, it should naturally flip. You don't need to use as heavy of a weight. We're just gonna use these uh, medium sized brass eyes. Try to uh, just make this as light as we can without really uh, needing to make a big splash in the water or anything like that when, when we're throwing this at permit. Um, I think that's a nice little advantage to the jig hook is it should naturally flip. Again, I haven't tested this fly out yet, so if anybody out there is like, oh, this won't work, you know, it's got to be tested first. Uh, once we get our eyes on there, we're just going to move our thread to the back of the hook here. Work a little bit up the bend. And... We're gonna go ahead and we're gonna get our rabbit strip. Um, go ahead, cut ourselves off a little bit of rabbit here. Now on the smaller, this is the smaller of the two that I'm tying. This is the number four. So I'm gonna use a regular 1 8 inch rabbit strip. Uh, if I was tying in my bigger size, which is a size one, I'm using a uh, Magnum Bunny, which I believe is a fourth inch. So all we're gonna do here is just get a little bit of this bunny, get a nice little piece here. And we're gonna make a claw out of this bunny. So all we want is all these fibers laying one way here. Let's see if we can get them all going one way. We're gonna get our Loon UV thick. And all we're gonna do is just put a little bit of Loon right here on the rabbit. And then just take our fingers, take our fingers and we're going to just get that loon to soak into that rabbit. So once we feel it's good and soaked in, try to get some of the sunder hair out of here. That's sticking all my fingers now. We're just gonna take our botkin, try to find the center of the hide and just separate the actual fibers into two pieces, like so. And just take your hand again. Just get one going one way, one going the other way. So it just starts to make a little claw looking shape here. And then if I figure out what I do with my light, there we go. We're just gonna go ahead and hit it with a light Now you could just do it like that. Um, I like to add a little bit of color to it. So I'm gonna take a red Sharpie and hit the tips here. Or actually before I do that, I'm just gonna trim it just a little bit. Just to kind of make it a little bit of a thicker claw. Then we'll just take our red Sharpie and all we're gonna do is just hit the tips. So, get that tip. As you can see, all we did was just add a little bit of red to each side of the claw. Now we want our claws to be nice and durable and stay in that little V shape. So we're just gonna take a little bit more loon thick, put one on each piece of the claw here. Kind of rub that in a little bit. And again, hit it with our light. 
That little claw should never, never move from that position. You should always have the little V position in the claw. I think I got all this little unruly bits of rabbit on the back side of here. We're just gonna go ahead and trim some of this out. So we don't need all this. And that's just gonna make a bulkier tie-in point. Oh, we got a rabbit on there. All we're gonna do is just get this extending just a little bit past the hook point, and we're gonna tie it in. And when we tie this in, we actually wanna go down the shank and then a little bit up onto the curve of the hook. Get that in there nice and secure. So when this rides in the water, it'll actually be at a slight angle. So that claw will be up almost like this crab is kind of in that little fighting position. We'll cut out our excess rabbit. And so now we have our claw in. So everything else from here on out is gonna be making your basic strong arm merkin or just merkin pattern. So I'm gonna go ahead here, I'm just gonna make a dubbing loop and we're just gonna put a little dubbing loop of rabbit right here in front of the claw just so you have a nice transition from claw to body. If I can find my cheap little dubbing twister. I think I bought this dubbing twister for like a dollar fifty. Uh, it's not a tool I use very much, so forgive me if I'm not the greatest dubbing twister you've ever seen. Or hair twister, whatever. All right, got that on. So all we're gonna do here, we're just gonna get a little bit more of our rabbit, maybe inch and a half to two inches worth. And just cut that off. We're just gonna get our rabbit and put it in our dubbing loop. Gonna get it nice and spread out there. Just take our scissors and we're just gonna cut this hide away. Again, for all of you who are making fun of my dubbing loop abilities right now, I am not the greatest at making dubbing loops. I much prefer buying brushes, but unfortunately nobody has made me a rabbit brush yet that I know of. I think eventually I'm just gonna buy myself a brush machine and make myself my own little rabbit brushes. Probably be the greatest little brush ever. But we're just gonna go ahead, we're gonna twist our dubbing loop up. And this dubbing loop takes a while because it's not, like I said, there's, there's much better dubbing loop tool twister things on the market. Mine is not the greatest because this isn't something that I, I use a whole lot. But all we need this in, just twist it a little bit. It's starting to look fine right there. Just gonna pluck some of these out. Twist it just a little more here. All right, looks like it should be fine. And if I can find it, I know I have it around here somewhere. Losing all my tools today. Oh, of course it's right in front of me. Get our little hackle pliers, just grab our thread. And we can work our rabbit right around the shank of the hook here. Yeah, 
and we'll use all this rabbit. All we want really is the rabbit just kind of making a transition from claw to body and hiding just a little bit of that claw for us. Go ahead, we'll tie this in. Cut that out. I like to just kind of stroke the rabbit back a little bit. Come in with my thread and just kind of tie down on it. You can kind of see once that rabbit's wet, it's gonna cover up a lot of that claw for us. The next thing we're gonna do, we're just gonna get a, uh, a little saddle hackle, just to kind of mix in a different color in there. So pick out a smaller one since this is a smaller fly. And we will get the feather ready, just put on there. We're just gonna palmer it around just so it goes right around this rabbit a little bit. Tie it with the curve facing shank of the hook here couple wraps forward get our thread out of the way and we lost our dubbing twister again oh, there we go nope or not our dubbing twister our hackle pliers we're all over the place today so all we're gonna do just come in here and just palmer this feather right over our rabbit. One right after another. Until we run out of feather. About out of feather now. Unwind our thread all the way back and just capture that feather. Looking like an amateur here today. That's all right though. Oop, and that just happened. That's all right. We'll just do this by hand. That's my only objection about my hackle pliers is sometimes they are a little too rough on feathers and I end up breaking feathers when I'm trying to tie them in. Oops. Capture that. It's probably mostly my fault, but you gotta blame something besides myself. Oop, we got our feathers in. Again, we're just gonna tie back on those feathers a little bit. Then we're gonna bring our thread forward, just kind of smoothing out any loose fibers or anything in here. Get them out of our way. So we can get to our next step of just making the merkin body. feather to fold around there. Looks a little better. All right. So next thing we're going to use is we're going to get some Congo hair. This is the, what color is this? Caddis tan. All right. So this is their Caddis tan color. We're going to mix this with uh, their brown color. And we're just going to get a little clump off here. Cut it off the shank. We're gonna cut this in half. We're gonna take one of the halves and cut that in half. So we're left with a little inch and a half inch piece here. We're just gonna take that piece all the way here at the back and we're gonna tie it in 
at an angle. Give it about four or five wraps. And we're gonna peel over the opposite side. And then we're just gonna do another four or five wraps, just making an X on the wraps that we made before. And we're trapping a couple fibers down there. It's not too bad. And then we trapped a couple feathers, but we'll live with it. All right. The next thing we're gonna do, we're gonna grab these uh, silicone legs. These are from Sightcast Fishing. This is their uh, uh, sand, I think it's called sand crab or something like that. Say on the package, no. Uh, it's like sand crab, it's got these blue tips on here. I really like the way these uh, blue tips look compared to using uh, some of the other brown and blue legs out there. So all we're going to do, we're just going to tie this in on the top of the hook. We're going to take one on each side here. And then we're just going to tie a little X right over it. Just kind of make sure these aren't going anywhere. Good. One side with the X. And get one on the other side. Fold that over the top. Now we're gonna take our little clothespin. We're gonna fold all of that back and just hold it in place with the clothespin. So now it's out of our way. Now we can take our Congo hair again and just kind of do the same process. Make a little extra wrap, about four or five going this way. Fold this side back. Make sure you get all those fibers and four or five wraps going the other way. So we have that, we just take our pen again and hold it again. So right here, we're gonna change colors. We're gonna go to this uh, medium brown Congo hair kind of accent the little color pattern we were already doing. Oh, I already have some cut. I don't even have to cut it. So again, we just have a little section cut. Cut it in half and then cut it into force. So this one was already cut in half. We'll just cut it into force. And tie it in the exact same way. Again, just taking our pin and folding it back. Now we're gonna need another pair of legs. Uh, you can add as many legs as you really want to this. Usually I add about three pairs of legs. If you wanted to add four or five, you know, one after uh, every time you tie in some Congo hair, it's perfectly fine. It's just gonna add more movement to your fly. So again, just kind of tie right over it. Over one side, and we're gonna tie over this other side here. And again, get these legs folded back with our pen. That just keeps everything out of the way for us. Now we'll go back to our uh, caddis tan color. I think we'll do two more of the caddis tan, then another pair of legs, and then finish it off with a little bit more brown. This side a little longer. Again, we're still just doing our X's all the way to the front. And we're gonna try to get these wraps as close up to these eyes as we just possibly can. I always hate it when I see these toad style bodies and you see a big gap between the uh, 
the body and the eyes. So we're just gonna jam pack as much on here as we just possibly can get on. Make a little bit more room for ourselves. So we got one more set of legs to add. We'll go ahead and get those on there. Forgot to put my bobbin pin on. Right, put that on. Take our legs. Our legs on here to make a nice little tie-in point for our last bit of Congo hair. Get all this back in and out of the way. And this will be our last little bit of tongue Congo hair tied in here on the front. Gonna look a little bit messy here on the front, but once it's trimmed, you're never gonna notice. Oop, got that. We can just jump ahead of the eyes here, make a couple wraps. Next thing we're gonna do, now that we're done tying, is just get our legs and just get all of our legs down through the Congo hair to the bottom of the fly. I'm trying to take very few fibers with it down there. So, uh, these three on one side, we can take our hackle pliers, hold those legs down, get these fibers out, and we'll do the same thing here on the other side. Kind of get them all down there without trapping fibers. We'll hold them all down here with our hackle pliers just so those legs stay out of the way. Now we can take our Congo hair and trim it. So, I mean, you can make a body really wide if you want to come like this. You can make bodies not as wide. I like to just kind of start at the eyes and just make a, like a 45 degree angle. Nothing too big. I find, you know, a lot of times you'll end up making the bodies way bigger than they need to be. Just a nice little body it kind of matches the size of the fly here so i'm gonna take the other side another 45 and cut it highly unlikely you're always gonna get the fly to be the same size so i like to come back with my little cartery tool get it to heat up and i just kind of get it so it kind of makes the fly nice and even and come back, just kind of make everything look real neat. Like I knew what I was doing when I made my toad body. I'm just kind of burn some ends on that side. Burn any fibers that are kind of sticking out that we may have missed. And just make sure we avoid the legs. So, looks pretty good there. We can then let our legs go. Next thing we're gonna do is just take our scissors, kind of measure out the size of our hook, and then just come one, two of those lengths off the body, just cut and measure the legs. So again, measure that, one length, two lengths, just so we get a little bit of that blue on each side. And then we can just take our legs and kind of pull them back up so they're in the middle of our body here. And we're 
really have to, but make it look nicer. Leave the legs on the bottom or whatever you want to do with them. Let's check it, make sure we don't got too many. And we got a couple little stragglers still. There we go. All right, now all we got to do is just a uh, whip finish and uh, we're pretty much done with this fly. So we'll go ahead and whip finish here on the front. And then if you want to add any UV, you could add a uh, Loom Flow, Loom Thin. We'll put a little bit of uh, Loom Flow just to finish this one off. Um, so, but yeah, this is pretty much the, uh, or pretty much my version of a strong arm Merkin. Uh, again, I haven't really tested it on a redfish or bonefish or permit yet, but pretty confident it should work. Uh, love to, uh, get it to a few people and have them test it for me and you know if i could ever get down to the keys to do some permit fishing i'd love to test it myself so and uh speaking of getting people some flies our winner last week uh never contacted me never got into any contact uh that i heard from so uh william walters you're gonna end up missing out bud we gave you a week so we went ahead, we picked a new uh, winner, uh, Matt Ryan. So uh, Matt, I'm gonna try to get a hold of you. Again, I'll give you a week, and uh, if I can get into contact with you, you get some free flies, man, so uh, congrats. Uh, this is my Strong Arm Merkin. If you guys liked it, please uh, like and subscribe to our uh, YouTube channel. We're gonna continue to try to put these videos out every week, and. Uh, Hopefully get you guys some uh, some actual fishing videos coming here shortly if uh, I can ever, ever get some time out of the office. So, thanks for watching. Bye.